Hey, what's up guys? Uh, today I'm back with another tutorial. Uh, I've had a few people request this one, so here it is. Uh, this tutorial is going to cover uh, basically how I made this video right here. Okay, so there you have it. Um, that was a little animation that we're going to be uh, creating today. So um, that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of Firefox. And uh, let's go ahead and get uh, Cinema 4D open real quick. Okay, so once you're in Cinema 4D, uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is download Throwsy if you don't already have it. And in case you don't know what that is, that's a plugin uh, for Cinema 4D. It's free. Um, Google's your friend. I'm not going to show you how to install that if you don't have it already installed. Just look it up. It's really simple and straightforward. Uh, so, anyways, uh, once you have Throwsy installed, you're ready to. You're you're pretty much set and ready to go. So the first thing I did was um, I went up to MoGraph, went down to MoText, and created some text as you can see here. And I just left it at text. So that's what I'm going to do here, just for the sake of this tutorial. I will put it in caps and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to increase the depth to say about 50 just to make it a little bit thicker and you could even go more than that so maybe 80 okay so we have that and the font I used I believe was reboard I'm not 100% sure on that but I think it was reboard so uh, if you don't have if you want that you can go ahead and download it um, but really, um, you, know, you can use whatever font you want. So uh, that's that. So we have that right now. That's basically our text. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do, uh, this is where Throwsy comes into play. So what we're going to do is uh, make sure our text is selected. We're going to go up to Plugins, go to Throwsy, select Throwsy. And right here, we're going to go over to the Dynamic tab and change this to On Collision. Okay, the dynamic mode and what we're going to do is we're going to break each piece each letter basically into say 10 pieces and you can do this uh, you know as, as much as you want all the way up to 400 pieces but I will say that uh, it's going to take a lot longer to do this and for the sake of this tutorial I'm leaving it at 10 pieces per letter to make this go by quicker so you can see that was pretty fast but with a lot more pieces it would take a lot longer uh, so anyways, it's going to do that. You hit break now. It breaks uh, breaks this up into a whole bunch of different pieces. And right now, um, let's go ahead and increase our frame range here. So let's go to about 400. So that's plenty to work with for right now. Okay. And if you notice, we go ahead and hit the play button. Uh, nothing's going to happen because this is set to on collision. Now if you wanted this to just fall and break all you'd have to do is make sure these uh, simulation uh, dynamic body tags are selected and change the trigger to immediately and if we play it now you'll see the, that the text actually has some dynamic to it. But we don't want that so we're going to change this back to on collision and basically the next thing I did was I dropped in a cube object and slid this over and what we're gonna do is we're gonna shrink it down by grabbing that little orange dot and I went up here to this button here and got a top view and kinda centered this over the text a little bit better drug it out to about the length of the text here so say maybe right about there doesn't have to be exact but kinda close so something like that like so and what I did to this cube was went up to simulation tags added a rigid body to this and in the rigid body tab I went to mass and changed this to custom mass and increase mass to say um, maybe 15 15 for now we may have to change that later okay so now if we go ahead and play this you can see that our uh, our cube falls and hits the text and affects it and whatnot. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to double click down here to create a new material. Double click on that new material that's been created. Check off specular and we're going to check off color and just check on transparency and leave it at that. What we're going to do is we're going to drag this onto the cube 
so that our uh, cube is, is invisible. It will still affect our text, but uh, you will not be able to see it in the final render. And so the next thing I'm going to do, which you don't have to, you can just drop in a floor. It doesn't really matter, but I actually have a, a little plug in here in my content browser called Grayscale Gorilla, as I use in all my tutorials and videos. And it's got some of these preset studios, or you can create your own. If you don't have it, I'd recommend you download it. It does cost money. However, there are ways to get it for free, of course. Uh, it's up to you. But anyways, I'm just going to use this uh, studio, for example. And whoops. I'm going to have to undo that. Let's do this. Let's copy this real quick. Command C. Let's go to Window, Content Browser. Let's open that studio back up. Let's get rid of these objects and import our little cube here. And now I'm just going to drag this over here. All right, kind of center it a little bit. All right, so now that we have that, if we go ahead and do a quick render, uh, you will see what we have so far. So you can see nothing, uh, nothing too special there. Just says our text. However, you can't see if you'll notice the cubes right here, but you really can't see it. And um, I'm gonna go ahead and increase our frame range again. We go to 400 frames. So now, if we play this, <clears throat> you can see that the uh, the text falls right through the floor. And that's because we don't have any uh, dynamic tags um, on the studio here. So if you imported a studio. If you imported a floor, you're always going to want to right-click on that, go to Cinema 4D or um, Simulation Tags, and go to uh, Collider Body. So now this has some dynamic to it, so things will interact with it. However, you notice when I press the play button, uh, that shouldn't happen, and I that's because I forgot. If you're using some kind of studio or something, you want to make sure you click on the dynamic body tag and make sure you go to Collision, change the shape to Static Mesh. And then whenever you play it, it'll play like normal, as you can see there. So what I'm going to do right now, once we have that, let's go ahead and uh, highlight all of our simulation tags here for the text. And let's, uh, let's change the mass of the text to, say, 12. So the uh, text has some mass to it. So you can see there it doesn't break near as easily kind of holds its own whereas before the the cube just basically you know destroyed it um, but anyways so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna play this forward a little bit and right here is your option to go frame by frame basically I got it to about right here where it's first started breaking the text and I went into the uh, the dynamic settings of the text here under force and I keyframe the uh, follow position so if we um, if you say we do like say we do let's control left click on follow position uh, let's change this value to I think 2 should be plenty high I don't know I'll have to play with this a little bit because I don't exactly remember uh, keyframe that so now like the the text kind of holds its own there as you can see it hits it and then kind of holds its own and then right here what we could do is um, increase this number to say maybe like six and basically what fall position does is that the text um, is still affected and still breaks but it tries to maintain its original position so the the pieces are still dynamic and interact with each other in the environment but they don't just fall uh, to the floor like you were seeing earlier. And you want to make sure anytime uh, you make any changes to anything you're keyframing that you make a keyframe. So if uh, you change it, you'll see this turns yellow. Make sure you control left click again to create another keyframe. So you can see whenever I play this, it kind of holds its own. And then I went ahead, skipped ahead a little bit. And I turned this number way down to like, I think like one maybe or 0.5 let's see a lot of this is just kind of trial and error to get what you want so we'll try one okay so the text kind of slowly falls apart 
so let's go ahead and play this real quick so you can see what we have okay and then right here I kind of let that fall off and then we can turn our follow position um, back up real quick to say like 10 so to hold it together really good press enter control left click to keyframe this so now the text kind of goes back to its original position and then all I did from right here was turn the follow position back off keyframe this and then the text falls like normally so if we go ahead and rewind this you'll see exactly what we have so far and of course this is going to turn out different every time you do it so it won't look exactly like what I did but this is a basic concept and uh, all I did after this once I animated this is uh, I went into project settings and uh, messed around with the time scale a little bit so say right there it's falling we can go up to edit project settings uh, go to dynamics and under here under the general tab you'll see our time scale now make sure uh, let's see we're gonna keyframe this right here on frame 230 so that it knows to stay up uh, play at a hundred percent up until frame 231 so we're gonna keyframe that at frame 230 let's go back to frame zero keyframe it again at a hundred percent so it'll play at a hundred percent up until frame 231 so this number is not changing at all okay and then 231 which I went a little bit too far 231 we're gonna change the time scale to say um, 11 percent okay now the time scale the you're gonna notice the little square it's gonna go uh, yellow to let us know a change has been made and we need to keyframe it so you're gonna create another keyframe there control left click and now it'll play at 11 percent okay so it's playing at 11 percent right now then from there you can kind of mess with the speed a little bit so they bring that back up to like 30 percent keyframe it so it slowly uh, starts to break and then we could just crank this up to like 160 and see what we get so let's control left click keyframe that and see what we have all together so let's go ahead and play this real quick and just to prove that you can't see that cube we'll do ahead and go ahead and do a quick render so you can already see that it's not showing up uh, if it is showing up you did something wrong and you don't want that so that's that so we'll go ahead and play it so you can see that's basically our animation that we have there so it's not exactly like I did um, in my YouTube video but it's the same basic concept uh, everybody that does this theirs is going to turn out a little bit different because uh, there's so many variables that go into this but this is basically how it was accomplished and how I did it uh, for the most part so um, that's basically that there's a lot of stuff you can do with this guys um, I hope this helped you out I hope this kind of gave you a better understanding of how I made this animation and um, I hope you can make something cool too if you don't mind please subscribe to my channel I'd really appreciate it please leave a comment down below let me know what you thought if I may have missed anything if you have any questions uh, feel free to ask those down below and uh, please give this video a thumbs up uh, that always helps me out and um, yeah uh, other than that um, uh, that's pretty much it and I appreciate you guys uh, for watching this uh, so I will see you guys later peace out